Welcome back. In this session, we discuss about a C preprocessor. The preprocessor in C language is not part of compiler, but it is a separate step that is used to transform the source code before compilation. So, this particular preprocessor has number of features like inclusion of header files, macro expansion, conditional compilation, etc., which are used to transform or expand the source code. The first part of this preprocessor is hash include directive. The hash include directives are used to include a file into your source code. You all remember we use this hash include stdio.h. So, whenever you write this in your source code, the preprocessor will include this particular file into your source code and code get expanded. And this hash include is having two possibilities. One is the file name is written in the angular brackets. Whenever the file name is included in the angular brackets, the file is searched in the predefined directives or in the system include files. In that, we try to search for this particular file. Generally, these are the standard library files. The second form is the hash include with file name written in the double quotes. Whenever the file name is written in the double quotes, the file is searched in the current directory. Generally, these are the file defined by you for your program. The next one is hash defined directory. The hash defined directives are used to define the macro constant. Dear friends, these are the constants for which no memory is assigned. Just the code get expanded by this macro constant. For example, this is the syntax here. We write hash define the macro name. Generally, the macro name is written in capital letters. There is no rule like that, but this is a good programming practice. So, whenever you write this macro constant, no semicolon at the end, remember that. In the source code, wherever you find this macro, it is replaced with 50. See, it is different from the constant uh, variables in the language. Generally, the constant variables are called symbolic constants, but people call even macros as symbolic constants. Okay? But it is better to call the constants in uh, C language or constant variables in language as symbolic constants. What are these constant variables, sir? Like int const variable. So, this is a variable whose value cannot be changed during the program. This is the variable whose value cannot be changed. Fixed 50. Variable value is always 50. You cannot change it. Even max value also cannot be changed. But for this variable, memory is allocated. But for max, no memory is allocated. So, let us try to see the differences between this symbolic constant. And macros. Of course, as I mentioned, some people also call macros as symbolic constant because sometimes they do the same purpose. There is nothing wrong, but it is always better to call these uh, constant defined by hash defined as macros and these fellows as symbolic constant. Now, if you see the symbolic constant, they are defined by constant keyword, whereas macros are defined using hash defined directives. Memory is allocated for the symbolic constants like for this the memory is allocated whereas for macros no memory allocated type checking now you can check whether it is integer type float type double type no memory checking for this just value is substituted and it is used in expression this variable can be used in expression of course even macros can be used in expression but sometimes there behavior is unexpected. Okay, we will try to see some example why they are having unexpected behavior in some expression. Okay, because of that I said cannot be. Actually, you can use it, but they may not give the expected result by difference. You have to work with them very carefully. So, it is better to use symbolic constant that is constant variables rather than macros for in expression. More versatile because you can use in uh, expressions and expect get expected result. But here you can't get expected result, so the purpose is limited for them. 
generally we use this macros for uh, you know defining uh, the range of integer variables in limits.h okay range of float variables precision of float variable for all these purposes this macro constants are used my dear now let us see this simple program here of course uh, in later example i'll give you the difference between macros and uh, symbolic constant it is a macro example now look here here I am using this macro, I define this macro that is VAL, that is a macro. So, in the program, wherever you see, wherever VAL is there in the program, that is replaced with 8, my dear friend. Actually, the source code expands like this. So, it expands like this, my dear friend. Backslash n, then the val is replaced with 8 into 4. So, obviously, 8 into 4 is 32, 32 is printed directly, my dear friends. So, when you run this particular program, you will get the output as 32, ok. So, that is the idea. Now, let us see the next program. In this, we are having macro with argument, but the argument which I send is not single argument, but I send the argument 2 plus 4. So, we expect 2 plus 4, 6, 6 into 6, 36. But let us see the output, my dear friend. The output for this program is 14, not 36. See, the problem with macro is it just replaces the argument as it is. So, the x value that is 2 plus 4 is substituted as it is. So, 2 plus 4 is substituted as it is. And again, next x also 2 plus 4 is substituted as it is. But because of the precedence, first 4 into 2, that is 4 into 2 is calculated that is 4 into 2 is 8, then the remaining addition part will happen. That is, okay, this is 4. 4 into 2, 8. So, you get 2 plus 8 plus 4, which is equal to 14. So, the answer which you got is 14, not 36. But with symbolic constant, we can get 36 output. Let us see that now. Now, let us see the next program. In this also, we are having macro with argument. And the argument which is sent to the macro is 2 plus 4. Now, I am defining a symbolic constant to which I am assigning 2 plus 4. See, 2 plus 4 means 6, 6 is assigned here. So, when I do val into val, you can expect val means 6 into 6 can be expected and you can get the answer 36. Whereas, here we already seen the answer is 14. Let us see this, my dear friends. Now, you see with uh, symbolic constant, you get the expected result, whereas with macro, you got some unexpected result, my dear friend. Let us conclude this session with some important preprocessor directives and their description. Towards the end, I will give you one example for conditional compare. So, we already seen hash define. Hash define is used to substitute a preprocessor macro, that is constant, macro constant, to define macro constant and their substitution. Hash include to insert header file into your source code. Hash undef. Hash undef, whatever macro you define in a particular part of the program, you do not want to use that particular macro, even if you are having that macro, you can use undef for that particular part. So, undefines a preprocessor macro. Then, if def, this is called conditional compilation. So, what happen if some part in if the some definition is there, macro definition is there, then that particular part of the code is executed, otherwise not. Okay. So it returns true if macro is defined, otherwise it will return false. Of course, for this we need to understand the selection structures. After selection structures, you can come back and verify this program which I am going to give, sir. You will understand better. But for completeness, here I am giving you a small program for conditional compilation also. Okay. So, these are all the directives which are used for conditional compilation, my dear friend. Like, these are all used for conditional compilation and this is uh, used to print the error messages, my dear friend. Okay. So, let us uh, take one simple example for conditional compilation to conclude this session. Let us consider the following example for conditional compilation. Here, I defined the macro A. And in the main function, this is the conditional compilation. What it is saying, if def a, that is if a is defined, you enter this block. It is actually within the block, my dear friends. Within the block, what you are doing, you are also defining b, which is 10. 
and this if block is ended my dear friend. So, because A is defined, B is also defined here. Am I clear? A, B, both the macros are defined. Now, you are trying to print A and B. Let us see the output, my dear friend. Let us see the output, my dear friend. Now, you see both A, B are defined. Therefore, what happened? You get the values of A and B. For example, let us comment this. That is, A is not defined and see what happens. Let us see what happens. Because both A, B are not there, you get error message. Because if A defined, then only B will be defined. Because A is not defined, this part will not execute at all. And if you say print A and B, it will give you error. Or if you say only print B, because A is not there, no? So, let us say only print B also, it will say error. Because B is not defined. It defines only when A is defined. Am I clear? So, let us see this. You will get the error, my dear friend. Okay, undefined reference. Okay, error. You got error message, my dear friend. Okay, you can just check it out. You will get that undefined error message. Okay, undefined reference error you will get. Okay, and you can also try undefining a variable, my dear friends. Undefining a variable also we can try. For example, here let us undefine A. Now let us try to print A and B. Let us try to print A and B. You feel that A is defined, but you already undefined A. So, because of that, you will get error message again. Even here, you will get error message. So, here he is saying A is undeclared. You actually declared, but you undefined it here. Because of that, it is giving you error. So, this is what we call it as conditional compilation method.